Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are welcome. If you are a new subscriber, I would always recommend that you use the playlists for the Master's Voice. The Master's Voice has many different topics. There's topics here about human trafficking. There's topics here about the invasion, a future invasion, a prophetic word from the Lord about the future invasion of the United States by Russia and China in the future. There are prophecies here about um, sexual abuse of adults, of children, and how people even sexually abuse themselves. God has a word for many different things that people are doing to put themselves outside of the love of God, to put themselves outside of the mercy of God, to put themselves outside of the favor of God. You may be a Christian, you may not be a Christian when you come to this channel. At a certain point, being a Christian or not being a Christian is irrelevant. All you need is a hearing ear at the very beginning. Because understand, Christianity is a choice. The people who are watching this channel who are Christians, they made that choice. Even if your mother wants Christianity for you, even if she loves you and she's a Christian and you're not, that is a step that each and every single person has to take with the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves. No one can desire God for you. No one can desire eternal life for you. These are choices that you must make by yourself. So if you've stumbled into this channel for any reason, whether the algorithm brought you here or whether you saw it on some social media app, people are talking about this channel, or if you found it by chance, understand that God has God has a conversation that he wants to have with you. It doesn't matter if you believe in a God. It doesn't, believe, it doesn't matter if you are serving another God who is not the God of the Bible, who is not the God of the children of Israel. You have come to a point, whether it was by design or whether you had planned it, you have come to a point where you have a chance to hear things that you may not be familiar with. You have come to a place where you can learn more than you are used to from your daily life. But then after a while of listening, and this is if you are not a Christian, you will have to come to a place where you make decisions that are going to impact your tomorrows. So after all of us come to the end of our lives, we will be asked how we ha have lived. We will be asked, where did we put our faith when we were men? Because after you pass away, you will no longer be man, you will be spirit. And the spirit cannot die. And there are only two places that the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the one who judges all spirits, will decide. You will either go into eternal life and everlasting life with him, or you will enter into the lake of fire forever. Don't think that this is a threat from a random woman. I have no power in myself to threaten anyone. I'm simply telling people that it is time. It is really time. I'm going to fix the lighting in a moment. It's gotten darker much faster than I expected. It is really time for saved and unsaved to take a good look in the mirror and decide how am I living? What am I living for? What is the value of the choices that I have been making thus far? And have I really taken the, the time to think about what's going to happen to me after my life is over? So welcome to the master's voice, new and old and algorithm sent and heaven sent, however you got here. The Lord God is going to be continuing to look at something called the sodomy ritual. I have been laboring in this prophetic series, and it is labor for what feels like 200 years, but it's not even three weeks yet. The sodomy ritual, this is the dirt of Hollywood part two. I received this prophecy on July the 17th, 2022, and I have still not finished putting up the prophecies related to Hollywood, but this one is already printed, so I'll do this one. Just a moment while I fix the lighting, please. And so I have been bringing forth a series of prophecies that the Lord gave me concerning the sin of sodomy. Sodomy is the key act that is at the heart of homosexuality. So homosexuality is just basically, um, if we can just skip past all the new definitions where it's now called alternative lifestyles and a personal preference, and it's now even apparently science and biology, Homosexuality is basically the sexual 
Um, the sexual preference of being attracted to one's own gender, one's own sex. You're attracted to what looks like you. Woman is attracted to woman. Man is attracted to man. But when we talk about this act of sodomy, this is exclusively the act of penetration. Sodomy cannot be anything else except the act of penetration of the backside. Sodomy can be practiced by both men and women. It can be male to male. A female can put on certain apparatus and then she will be able to do it to a male or she can do it to another female. So this is something that lesbians have access to. Sodomy is also something that married women have access to. And I shared in one of these videos that there are lots of women married and unmarried. I'm not going to go back and figure out which video it was, but the Lord was showing me that there are a lot of women married and unmarried who know that their husbands have a preference for male on male sex. A man will sometimes marry a woman to mask the fact that he is gay because his family has expectations that he should take a wife. Maybe he's the right age or as the Lord has revealed, as happens in, in certain more traditional cultures, such as in Africa, such as in South America, and perhaps even in Asia, when you are male, there comes an expectation, basic, culturally based, family based, that it's time for you to get married, it's time for you to have children, it's time for you to keep the lineage going. And many men in this situation who have homosexual tendencies and flagrant homosexual tastes, will get married to a female simply because they need to produce children, they need to produce an heir, and it's the general family expectation. But they carry on this life on the side, and that is called, as I found out, this is called being on the down low. Now, eventually, women, because they have this, this I guess when you're married, you will just know your spouse. And the Lord was just showing that basically sometimes women find out and they have an inkling or the husband comes clean in the relationship. And then in order not to lose the husband to disease, in order not to lose him to um, a boyfriend, or in order just not to lose the house and everything, or even the married life, I, I'm not sure what the motivations are. Uh, a woman will satisfy this sexual urge in her husband by doing various things for him with this apparatus that she can put on her body. And uh, the Lord says it maintains the equilibrium in the home, but all this is sin. Why is it sin? Because the Bible says clearly in Leviticus somewhere, and definitely in Romans when it's talking clearly about homosexual sin, that a man shall not lie with a man as he does with a woman. It doesn't matter if you're American when you hear this, Scandinavian, um, Yugoslavian, it doesn't matter if you're from all one of the many countries in Africa, South American, you cannot pretend that you cannot understand clear English. The Bible is available in all languages, and the Bible, the reason I love it, is because it is such an unequivocal, unequivocal book. You're either going to take God's word as it is, or you're not going to take it at all. The Bible is not a buffet. You cannot pick and choose what you want in it. And you also cannot twist and manipulate words to suit the current sin city tastes of this modern generation. So we, we know, if we are honest, that we are now in the time of degeneracy. It's not going to get any better from here. So there's not going to be any sudden uptick towards holiness of the past ages and things like that. We are in the age where because we are going toward the end of all things, as I've shared in many videos, God is now withdrawing from our midst. And as God is withdrawing from our midst, much like a man who's about to fold out of a card game, God is just putting his hands and pulling his chips back as he's getting to withdraw. Who's he pulling back? He's pulling back the people who love him. He's pulling back the people who respect him. He's pulling back the people who love his word. He's pulling back the people who realize that time, playtime is over and that they need to start cleaning up their lives in preparation to meet their king. The biblical standard is pretty clear. It's in a lot of verses. Without holiness, no man will see God. So this basically tells you if you're not leaving a holy life, you're not seeing the Lord. That's one of the things it says. We will not stand in his presence carrying filthy sin. 
The reason for that is because the Lord will judge all sin. And I always said that if sin is an entity and you are an entity and sin has you, when the Lord judges sin, sin is not going to let go of you. The two of you are going to be judged and put into eternal separation from God, which is for your spirit to be tormented always in the lake of fire. I didn't say hell because even hell and its contents will be poured into the lake of fire at the judgment. And so sexual purity is a big deal with God. Modern day society likes to change the meanings of words, as I said, because when you change the meanings of words, it then opens up a door for sin. Sin cannot just jump into the middle of the party. The Bible said, um, when God was talking to Cain, he said to Cain that sin lies at the door. Sin is actually crouching. This is an active stance of something that is alert and alive and watching just the way your dog watches you, hoping that you will give it, give him a treat and his eyes follow you and he's monitoring and he's watching to see if you're going to go and get the treat. Sin is like that, but in a truly robust and murderous way. Sin is very active. It is very alive and it is sweeping through our generation. And if you don't believe me, just talk to anybody that you know that has an active sin in their life and see what happens. See if they're going to be cut by your words and say, you know what, I'm very glad that you spoke to me. I, I, I sense that God sent you to speak to me in love. And I, I'm grateful because to tell you the truth, I was letting this thing take over me. But now that you've spoken to me, it's like a slap of, uh, of cold water in my face. And I, and I, I appreciate it. You're, you're never going to get that response. 10 times out of 10 today, you will get insulted. You will be told that you are judgmental. You will be told that you are not speaking in love and you will be told, well, so many other people are doing it. And besides your life is not clean. When you see this response, this is a response of rot inside a person. Our society is highly rotten and God knows it. And that is the reason that God has sent people like me to speak to that rot to expose the rot. When people jump to defend sin, instead of jumping to confess sin, this tells you the state of the society. And especially in the Western world, especially here in America, we are not in any good position. And so this sodomy thing here, I'm going to refer to as many prophecies as I can remember, whether I remember, remember them by name or whether I'm going to have to link them in the description later. This is just going to be a free flowing video and I will try to link to this prophecy as many of them as I can remember. So one of the things that I remember from 2019 is that the Lord showed me a vision. And in that vision, I saw the world map. God was talking about the rise of homosexuality across the world. And he was telling me that this thing is a cancer. It is a cancer because it fights against God's natural order. Now people treat the words natural order like it's some kind of prison sentence or like it's like a dirty word. But every single thing on earth has an order. The moon doesn't rise before the sun. The sun goes first and then the moon because that was their natural order of creation. The Lord made the day first and then it says that the night followed and then that morning and evening were the first day. And so that is how things go in God's kingdom. God made the world, we didn't. And so we arrived here much like a new baby and a new baby arrives in a household and there's a routine. The baby doesn't set the routine. The parents set the routine. But whenever people want to break away from the control and the rulership of God, they attempt to change the natural order to make room for new orders. And this is another thing that's coming. People always want to make room for a new order, a new flow, a new set of rules. And then in order to establish the new rules and grant them legitimacy, people will then begin to say things like the old rules are stifling and the old rules are archaic and the old rules were for our fathers and the old rules don't fit what we want to do anymore. So we need to switch it up. But I'm here to tell you that God has been saying in these prophecies that you can, sin doesn't get a makeover. So you can use language like diverse. You can use um, language like inclusive. You can use language like um, more tolerant. This is the kind of language that you hear coming out. This is all peace and safety. Peace and safety is a format of life that is going to attempt to break down all God established 
and replace it with a brand new order that serves, listen, listens to, and upholds Satan. Peace and safety is not, people aren't going to be running around peace and safety. No, peace and safety is the brand new lifestyle under which things like man to man will be fully acceptable. Pregnant men, fully acceptable. Men growing a far bigger chest than women, fully acceptable. When I share these things, I see that people are already weary in their hearts. And then I, I this is why I have to say, this is a marathon. The way you guard against that heart weariness is by going back to the word of God and going back to the tender presence of God to refresh yourself with him. These things are not passing away quickly. And if you are fainting as I'm merely speaking them, then as the Lord asked Jeremiah, if you can't handle it when the footmen are running, if you cannot handle a foot race with the swiftly running young men, how will you cope, Jeremiah? when the horses begin to run. The sodomy ritual is about Hollywood and the things that they do. The Holy Spirit is not concerned about celebrity gossip. I'm not here to keep up with the Kardashians. I'm here because there is truth that needs to be revealed and God is going to make sure that it comes out. And so um, a lot of these prophecies, they center around what happens to people when Money, power, and no accountability meet. You will always find that there are much sharper excesses of wickedness, meaning that things that you cannot conceive of will be happening at a very acute level. The more that money increases and the more that power increases and the more that no accountability increases, when people get together and form cliques, when people get together and form power crowds that the police are afraid of, or the police admire so much that they wish they were in the boys club. The things that rich people do to amuse themselves is what happens when you've done all you can within the normal sphere, all that money can get you. So you've had a 12 sum. You've gone right past what the poor teen boy at school can afford when he manages to get two girls to have an orgy with him. You've had a 10 sum, a 12 sum, a 22 sum. But the thing is, there's only so much that the average human body and the average human heart can accept for satiation, which means to become satisfied. And once Satan can see that you've already had your five sum and your six sum, the devil knows that it is nothing to drag you over the line into the world of the bizarre, the satanic, and the downright filthy. A lot of wealthy people swim where the devil is and with the secrecy and with the accessories of what money can buy, there is no end to the wickedness and the iniquity that these people can get away with without being caught. And that's the reason God is exposing this. Money will never expose these people. Authority will never expose these people. And that is why God is doing it. The first person the Lord spoke about is Beyonce. Again, the Lord says that this woman is an idol and that this idol is going to crash publicly. So the Lord has been speaking about this woman to me for almost a year, but I did not feel moved in any way to put any information about her on the internet because I do not do anything until the Lord tells me to do it. I've said that just because God is having a conversation with me or even because God is teaching me something, it doesn't mean that I should speak about it. This woman uses extremely strong witchcraft. I'm not sure how strong, but I just know that it's really strong. She uses what is called occultism. So, um, I don't have an in-depth understanding of it, but I know that with, with witchcraft, there's conjuring, but with occultism, you are calling on the most ancient of the ancient. These are very involved. These are very heavily involved satanic and demonic activities that use up a lot of spiritual power. And so, um, I've said that when I was young, I used to read a lot of these books, um, and, you know, a lot of books like, oh, with, with 
the little witch and this and that. These are just things that were in the children's library and you just read them. And so you, you're familiar with hearing, oh, to get you this done, little Peter Rabbit, you're going to need the tail of one frog and the eye of Newt and things like that. Yeah, this is not the kind of thing that this woman does. When, when God says that someone is a principal idol that is involved in occultism, this person has access to the kind of power that is able to mind control a lot of people at one time. And so you will notice that the followers of this woman, if any of them were to find this video, the instant they hear her name, her name alone is a triggering spell to them. If you say this woman's name to her followers, you don't have to say another word. They would cut you off. They would start gushing. They would say, have you seen her hair? Have you seen her shoes? Have you seen her left eyelash? They will go off and you will not be given room to interject. And this is because things have been done to these people at the beginning when they started to follow this woman and then progressively over time until many of the followers are not even themselves. I remember um, that this woman came on TV once in a short clip that was just part of a new segment. And I said to the friend that I was watching TV, I said, you know, this lady, and this was years ago, this was maybe 2018. I said, um, this lady could transform out of nowhere. I just said this, this lady could transform live on stage into a wolf, an actual wolf. And her followers would say, this is the most amazing CGI we've ever seen. This is the height of the queen's ability to entertain. And I said, it would be an actual wolf standing there, an actual wolf that could jump on stage and eat anyone, and they would not know the danger that they were in. Not saying that she has the ability to transform into a wolf. Speaking of the depth of inability to fight against or even perceive the strength of magic, there is great magic practiced by people who have been working at this thing for years. The fact that Christians do not know that magic exists. And there are people who have access to books that are no longer in the public domain. Why? Because the more you secure information, the more you secure power. If you teach everyone how to build a fire, no one needs to ask another person how to build a fire. But when you sequester information, when you hide it away, you greatly consolidate power to yourself. You make sure that just a few, you and those that you want to share it with, have access to the information. Therefore, it's only a few, you and the ones you want to share it with, that are able to exercise power against a great multitude. And now somebody finally gets it why the Catholic Church has all the books all the books, all of them. The Lord says that this woman will come down to the dust, that he will bring her down to the dust and humble her greatly. Please remember that in a previous prophecy, the Lord says that this woman is going to lose her life, that she will pass away young. So um, that is just something to keep in mind that she will lose her life. But he says that because this woman says, I sit as a queen, and I'm fit to receive worship as if she were God. He says that he will drag her down to the dust and he will humble her, that she is promiscuous with multiple men, people that she is not married to, and that her husband fully knows about it because her husband is basically her pimp. The Lord says that this being given out to other men is a source of bitterness to this woman. It is part of a ritual that is called wife swap or swingers. So swingers is something that they did in the 60s, I think, where you just sleep with other people's wives. Um, you, you, you know you have your wife, but then your best friend has a pretty wife and then they seem pretty open and you guys do barbecues together all the time. And then maybe somebody makes the suggestion and no one is shocked. No one is like, <gasps> they just say, well, you know that interesting maybe after the jello and then they used to do that men would go home with their friend's wife and then they would have big parties and do this wife swap swingers and in fact this happened recently with another person that the lord mentioned in a previous prophecy when i was handling sodomy in the church and he mentioned this man steph curry mr curry's parents literally exchanged partners with the couple that lived across the street from them. And now 
the wife of Mr. Curry's, Steph Curry's mom is with another man and Steph Curry's father is with the wife of the man that his mother is with in 2022, live in our faces. And so the Lord says that the reason for the deviance, the deviance of defiling the marriage or swapping your wife or giving your wife out to other men is to defile the covenant of marriage. And also because the things that these people do to this woman produces an altered state. So I will talk about the altered state later, but the first thing is defiling the covenant of marriage. This is what God has to say about marriage. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed is undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. A whoremonger is not what it sounds like. Mongering something means to sell something. So obviously if you hear whoremonger, you think the Bible is talking about pimps. It's not only talking about pimps. The Bible is talking about anybody who passes their body through multiple partners with no accountability and of course, no marriage. So there are things that I said that when you find out about them, they definitely change the flavor of your Christianity for the worse. Yes, you do have the benefit of now being more useful to God because you now know about these things, but no, um, you do not have an extraordinary peace because the people actually who are most at peace in this world are the Christians who know nothing. So the, the Christians who are in churches where none of these things are addressed, holiness, purity, righteousness, God's righteous requirements for what we are to do with our bodies, things like that. Those Christians are very much at peace because no one is telling them verses like whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. This is Hebrews chapter 13 and verse four. So when it, your church doesn't have sexual purity, it doesn't preach holiness, it doesn't preach sanctification, it doesn't preach righteousness. In fact, when your church gives you no indication that as you are in Christianity, you're not in it for yourself. Christianity actually exists for the Lord. If I'm honest, the Lord seeded his son into the earth as a gift to reap to himself a people, to love him, worship him, and be one with him. God made the sacrifice of Christ Jesus to win back the fellowship that God paid an unjust penalty for losing in the garden. For all God know, he had the best friend Adam and the best friend Eve, and he lost them in a moment of time. Seeking through love to win them back, the Lord seeded Jesus into the earth as the payment to who? to God himself. God paid the price for man's sin. Man could never pay his own price because there is nothing in man that is currency enough to pay for sin. Christ Jesus is the only one who can atone for our sin. It's like having a bill that you can never pay, a debt that you can never wipe off, Experian and the rest of them. And somebody comes up and says, I will take full responsibility for your debt. I will handle everything with your debtors. I will clear your name. I will put your credit score back to perfection. All I am saying is the way we used to be best friends before, let's go back to that. But Christianity is not taught this way. It's taught as a way to acquire things. You lack peace, come, God is the peace store. You lack joy, come, God is the joy store. You've tried to get that baby 17 times and you still can't conceive, God gives babies. You're looking for a husband, don't worry about it. God will clean you up and bring a man into your life in no time. Christianity is not put forward as a relationship where we are taught how to please and love the Lord. And this is why whenever you address the thing that the Lord hates most, which is sin, the thing that makes us least pleasing to him, there is a strong reaction against it. Why? Because the demons that are controlling many of the sins in our lives as Christians do not want us to return to the fellowship of Eden. Marriage is core to God's plan in the earth. Just like man with woman, one man, one woman, not a group, is core to God's plan 
in the earth. When you defile marriage, especially the way God says that marriage is mocked openly by popular people, when you defile it, you bring down the estimation of marriage in people's eyes. And so this is why people don't want to get married anymore. I was making a comment and then I got slightly off topic, but thank you that the Holy Spirit has brought me back to it. I was saying that whoremongering is now the becoming the default posture of our generation. Our generation is more interested in looking cute in selfies, looking attractive, looking sexy, sexualized, or just as raw sex in case of people who are selling sex on these apps and selling sex on the streets and selling sex in Instagram. We are more interested in how to put our hidden assets out there so that we can um, attract people. But this brings judgment because this is sin. The generation has pivoted away from being monogamous. The generation has pivoted away from being loyal. The generation has pivoted away from being faithful. And now it's being sold again, just like it was in the 60s, that freedom is sex. Sex is freedom. You need to have as many as you want. And so I was saying that there are things that if you look into it, you will really become a little sad. And one of the things I found was this, this phrase called the body count. God has given me freedom to share and I will share. I did not know that there is such a thing called a body count because in my world as a lawyer, body count means how many people were shot in a mass shooting. That is what body count means. It means how many people have been irreparably, irreparably harmed because someone took a firearm or someone drove a truck into the middle of someone of a group. That's what it means. But body count, older people, actually refers to how many people, a young woman, especially this term is tagged on young women, how many people a young woman has slept with? And you would be shocked. It is in the 70s. It is in the 50s. And I'm talking about in a period of a year. A year. You can find these things in the comment section all over YouTube. There are videos for them. You don't watch those videos. You just look through the comments. Pause the video because the things you will hear, you will regret it. And so the Lord says that in this culture, marriage is being openly mocked by very famous and popular people with a wide reach of influence. And he says that the effect of what they do destroys how marriage is perceived in society. He says also that the rituals that they do, such as sodomizing women, it brings about an adverse effect on people. And this is because demons enter into that ritual. Demons monitor and protect that act. The same way that angels of God watch over God's people in all acts, including the act of a man with his wife, demons are always present when illegal forms of sex are practiced. And they are then transferred onto people Demon demonic transference is a very real thing. And so God says that people will listen to their role models and they will start to have mockery of marriage because the famous people that they're following openly mock marriage and say, no, have your fun while you're young and have your fun while you're middle-aged and swing when you're older and things like that. And he says that all this has a powerful trickle-down effect on people, even if it's not visible to the eye. And it doesn't have to be visible to the eye because as I said, this is all spiritual and it's happening without people knowing. But God says that this couple, Jay-Z and his wife, Beyonce, he will humble them. Say to the king and queen, humble yourselves, sit down. Your rule will collapse, even the crown of your glory. Jeremiah 13 and verse 18. And so with rituals, you get demons. And with demonic states, you get transference, which is a process where evil spirits are passed directly through physical contact, including sexual physical contact, whether it is rape or sodomy or other types of things like molesting people very young because it breaks the gates of a person's soul and it gives demons aspect, um, access. So the Lord was speaking about altered states and an altered state is something I spoke about it where I was saying uh, in the in the example of 
a vision that the Lord gave me of a little boy who was being molested by his mother. It's in one of the prophecies under the sin series. I think it's called immolators of desire. And I saw the damage that happens to children. I saw a little boy and his mother had opened the door at night and she was standing in the door, just checking on him. Obviously she was about to come in and molest him. And this little boy had two parts he would go behind a wall that existed within him. So the real little boy ran behind that wall and began to play in his mind. He was playing in his mind and then he left the other little boy there. And that other little boy used to call himself the handsome prince and call his mother the evil queen. That's how that other little boy used to process the abuse. And that child behind there would continue playing and thinking, I'm a little boy and, and mothers don't touch little boys and do things to their pee-pee because it, 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 I'm a kid. And so he was coping behind that wall. But sometimes the altered state splits people and takes them off their mind altogether. And there is... I don't live in a cultural bubble. There is video on the internet of Beyonce in a state whereby it seems like absolutely nobody is home. She is sitting and swaying and rocking and looks like nobody is there. And that video has been on the internet for at least five years, I think. So um, the altered state can happen when there is so much damage happening to a person that it is very easy to transfer them out of their normal self into that. Sometimes it can be done with code words. I think this is, it is not quite hypnosis. I think it's called MK ultra program or something like that, where because you have traumatized a person very often, they split and now there is an art to calling forth one of the splits, whichever it may be. And so transference, God says, transferring demons into people and creating altered states in people, people that you can switch on with a code word, even in public, the person will just switch on and begin to say things uh, that they've been programmed to say, or the person may switch on and become a completely different person in public. And they have no control because they have no control over the trigger words. God says it has been done to so many stars and it was usually done to them when they were forced to perform the rituals or when they agreed to perform the rituals. And he says that transferring demons even happens to the population on a mass scale. And this is because he says, never before have demons been able to reach this many people at once because of technology. They are able to flow through a single music video and impact. You look at these music videos, they come out the same day, they've got 13 million views. By the end of the week, they've got 167 million views. Some of those views are by people watching over and over again, and those people will be fastest affected. But even if you watch it one time, because there is spiritual power that has been cursed Think of everything you have ever read in the storybooks. Think of everything that you have ever read on Disney. Curses can be put on objects and then the object is left lying there as innocent as you please. If a spoon is cursed and you come and pick up that spoon and put it in your mouth, by the time you have contacted it, no word was said this curse is for this person. Whoever touches it, think of the Bible. In the Bible, Joshua and the Israelites, they come and they fight against Jericho, right? They, they raise the thing to the ground. It's the first city um, that they take and they dedicate it to the Lord. No, Jericho was the second city, I think it was. But either way, they take this city and they're, they, they dedicate it to the Lord and Joshua curses the city. Joshua says, whoever comes and rebuilds this city will only rebuild it at the cost of his firstborn son. And then whoever hangs the gates will hang it at the cost of his second born son. So he's basically saying, if anybody ever comes back to this city that we destroyed in the mighty power of our God, yes, it was the first city. So he says, whoever comes and dares to try and rebuild this monument, that is the first symbol of our victory, where after Moses has died, because they had lots of victories in Moses' day. But this one was Joshua's first. 
Joshua marks it and says, if anyone dares to put stone upon stone and try to bring Jericho back to life, he will do it at the cost of his firstborn. And by the time he has finished building the city and he has built the walls, and now he comes to hang the massive gates that protect a city, he will do it at the cost of his lastborn. Lots of years later, we're talking probably decades or at least centuries, Joshua is long dead. A king comes and says, oh, this looks like a good place to build a city. And it was once the mighty city. And he starts to build it. And his firstborn son, the heir apparent, dies, which is usually a sign that you should stop doing stuff. But he carried on building it until the city was rebuilt. And then when he hung the gates at the dedication ceremony, his, second, his lastborn son dropped dead. So things can be cursed. Videos can be cursed. Movies can be cursed. All kinds of things. And so as people are sitting before these demonized um, zombie video games and, and Grand Theft Auto and videos that give you uh, video games that give you more points, the more you kill people, you're, you're watching it. And, and many people, you can see how violent your children become over time, exposed to deep diving into holes to, to free dragons and saying, oh, no, I'm on level 12, mom. I can't come for dinner. And before you notice, rebellion is in your child. A four-letter words are in your child. Your child has changed. Your child is darker. And yet, even if, even if this was the time of COVID, your child doesn't have any outside influence or you're wondering where it's coming from. It's coming from the screens. It's coming from the screens. These children are committing suicide and they are staring into these screens. And it sounds like ridiculousness, except that every parent who has gone through this or every adult who has fallen into the grip of this understands perfectly what I'm saying. Transference gives demons access to millions, and they have that access greatly multiplied now because of technology. And God says that it will affect people socially. It affects people through spiritual oppression. It even induces demonic states in people. So the same state this state can be induced in you even when the star, the movie star, or especially music stars he was showing me, is not there. And God said this is why they tour so much. They are constantly maintaining, creating, and contributing to worldwide occult energy and occult powers. Rituals are being done by singled and married superstars from all walks of life including politicians, but especially rappers, singers, people who influence others by their music, their videos, and their lyrics. The people that God named involved in this, and the list is by no, by no it's not exhaustive. So there are lots more. Beyonce, Jay-Z, Rihanna, Future, Kanye West, and he said mega stars like Lady Gaga. Rituals occur frequently at the shows of music stars and even on the sets of movies. It happens on the runways. Models are told, let's gather in, let's gather around, and let's begin to tune ourselves into collective energy before the show, show. Let's put out this good energy. But God says it's all a trigger point. It is all a trigger point for demons to enter in and take control. And um, Beyonce is on record of saying on... I think it was Oprah's show many years ago that, oh no, you know, I like to get loose before a show because um, my other person comes in and takes over. She spoke of having an altar called Sasha Fierce. Lady Gaga is on record of saying, oh no, she has a man inside her that she called calls Roman. And even Denzel Washington is on record as saying, oh no, before every movie, you know, you've got to get less good loose because that other, you know, you've got to pull on that other. These people are basically speaking a language in public on tape that they understand one to another, but the watching public is utterly clueless about what they're watching. The watching public has no idea what is going on. And so, um, Doors are being opened for demons to come in and take control. And every ritual, God says, it serves a purpose. It is to defile whoever is watching or listening to the end product. And this is why I always say to people, I'm not the one to tell you to throw out your TV because I'm not the one at your house or anything like that. I'm not here to give that kind of advice. But wisdom is profitable to direct, which means that if you're just constantly watching everything with the bloodletting and the bloodshedding and, and the zombies rising from the dead, if you cannot see 
that all these mini series featuring zombies and all this stuff is not only predictive programming, but it's going somewhere, then there will be sharp costs to pay in the, in the future. And then nobody can complain. Nobody can say, but anybody forced you because you're keeping and opening doors. So, um, says the music of those who worship demons. These people, they will conduct their rituals before their albums. They will do rituals in the photo shoots for the albums. They will do rituals at the shooting, shooting as the video is being shot. The video is full of symbolism. The video is full of ritualism. It's happening. They're either seancing before or during or after this thing. And so the presence of the demons is there when they're made. The Lord says the, the music has spells. It has chants. It has mind control. It's full of evil suggestions that will encant wickedness. To encant something actually means to basically cast it, like casting a spell. It encants wickedness over the people who listen, listen to it. And God says you become an automatic participant in the ritual. And then as you sing these songs over and over again, I spoke of Michael Jackson and I said in the last video that features, um, stars that God says, nobody should be listening to this man's music because this man was heavily into the occult. This man's surprising giftedness was heavily rounded out with spiritism, occultism, magic. It could even be that some of the things that this man did on camera that everybody said was a first and impossible were not done by human power. Look at these magicians. Look at these people that are openly suspending themselves six to 12 inches off the ground. David Blaine and cousins in public. These people are working with things that are not of God. It entertains for a moment, but a moment is very long in hell. A, a moment is very long on the other side of death. And people need to be aware of these things and just think them through. Repeating these, music, repeating these songs and things like that that are soaked in this music, God says that as you repeat the lines of the music over and over and over again to yourself and to others, you're actually releasing the incantation and making the spell ever stronger over yourself with each repetition. And he even says that this is why in rock music, they rely on certain riffs. They rely on certain chords because it excites the demonic realm. The demonic realm is excited by sight. It's excited by sound. It's excited by taste. There's a reason that people put out food to their gods in other in other cultures. They don't eat the food, obviously. Demons don't come and bother with the steak or whatever they put in there. The food is symbolic. Just the way you put out food for a cat and the cat comes, putting out this food is calling the demons that actually watch over and represent the brass, stone, and gold entities that they are worshiping in other cultures. There's a reason that people buy certain scents for ritual. There's a reason why in America, the whole nation seems to think, at least the, the part that's falling away, seems to think that their ancestors will come and watch over them if they burn sage or if they burn certain scents. There's a reason that these red and yellow and green candles in the long, tall Santeria jars with the fake Jesus on them are so popular. There is a reason for everything. And those who live ignorant of the reasons are the first trees to fall. Ignorance is no excuse. Ignorance of spiritual laws, spiritual truth, spiritual realities will not protect you. So I'm not saying go and research this stuff ad nauseum. I strongly do not say that, but I'm saying to live ignorant of these things and say, well, Jesus knows my heart and he's just going to look after me and bless God. No, that is willful ignorance. And it is very dangerous, very dangerous indeed. So to conclude this first part, words are powerful. What we hear is powerful. What we look at is powerful. And there is a responsibility on each person to take note of what is going into your eye gates, what is coming out of your mouth gate, what is going into your ear gates, because these things have a direct impact, whether you are awake or whether you are actually resting for the evening and sleeping, they have a direct impact on your soul. Your soul and your spirit are like processors 
you know, um, that are always on. They process all the stimulus that you take in during the day. And so what you're looking at and what you're listening to are extremely important. So um, God was just saying that this woman is deeply into witch, um, witchcraft, Beyonce, that she is a high level satanic agent. And here's what the Lord keeps repeating. He says, this woman is in high level Satanism and she's not sorry. So I, I will not go into, into depth about how many times I have said that you can't be sorry for what God isn't sorry for. I speak about this all the time when I teach about repentance. Your family member has gone and done something and yet you're mo more cut about what they did than them. They're not sorry at all, or they're like partially remorseful. And there you are burning the midnight oil, um, feeling bad for them and you're trying to talk to them and they're not remorseful. And here's the thing, you can't repent on behalf of someone else. You can pray on behalf of someone else, and it's very good to do that because intercession is what breaks the stone within and causes that rock to weep. Intercession can definitely break the stony heart, but the thing is that repentance is an individual thing. None of us knows if someone will repent, and that is why we are always encouraged to preach the gospel to all because we don't know who will be cut like the people in Acts chapter three and repent. Oh no, it's Acts chapter two and verse 38. However, when God says that someone is hardened in sin, is this celestial saying someone that is hardened in sin? Am I able to come to a concrete conclusion about somebody's hardened state? Sometimes you can tell because the Bible does say by their fruit, you will know them. But when God says it, this is an emphatic statement that is coming from someone who has all the evidence external and internal at his disposal. When God is saying someone is reprobate, when God is saying someone is apostate, and then people want to still say, well, you know, I'll pray. Then this is where I just say that I must separate from those who have this mindset. He says that this woman delights in using the public as her fodder for spells. So fodder is basically if you want to feed a horse, that stuff that you feed the horse as the horse's food. So this is what she feeds her spells. This is what she feeds her worship of the Baphomet people. And I spoke about this when I was addressing what pastors do. In these brotherhoods that the pastors join, like... Um, Eastern Star and the Masons and the Illuminati and other things like that. The payment is blood. It's because all these brotherhoods are run, focused on Satan and everything based in Satanism is a mockery of Christianity. In Christianity, the central core and theme that wins man back from death is the blood Jesus shed for us. And so anything involving Satan will always, I don't care if they first tell you to start with bringing a chicken or bringing a goat or bringing a heifer, it will always end in you being asked for people. It will always end in you being asked for people. And that is why at these concerts, people die. The Lord was saying in this prophecy that when the, the occultism, when the Satanism, when the witchcraft, when everything that they have stirred up and done reaches fever pitch, this is when people who are weaker in bodily constitution, usually females, but also this is when people who are weaker in um, spiritual constitution, this is people who don't have the Holy Spirit protecting them, who don't have angels watching out for them. The Lord says that they, they are the first to feel the effects of this spiritual stuff. They're the first to start convulsing. They're the first to go into shock. They're the first to go into these mentally altered states. And some of them, he says, will suffer the full effect of the spell and die. And you, you only have to think back to something that I mentioned earlier in the year. There was this huge scandal about this man, Travis Scott, and how the entire setup of the, the concert was demonic and everything. And then it began to have some kind of tones and he began to sing some kind of thing over and over again. So the story goes. And eventually people started uh, just convulsing. People just started going into all kinds of um, um, strange states. And then the entire stadium suddenly freaked out on cue, all of them like wild horses and began to trample people. 
And the press will tell you, if you look it up, that, oh, it was just a few people who died, but there was live footage from many young people that was up on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and everything, and these children were alleging that people died in the hundreds and that they were almost savage in their demeanor. They were off their heads, people said, choking and just dying on the spot. And so in these altered states, a listener can fall prey to this without even knowing it. And this is what high level satanic agents are sent to do. They're sent to look like candy, but they're really there to turn you into a corpse. The Lord says this woman enjoys doing the things that she does, that she has cast spells on people in her own entourage for fun because she enjoys watching them self-destruct. She constantly uses the public as a springboard for her wickedness. And many are those, young and old, male and female, who are being directly impacted by her loyalty to the devil. This is not a person who loves God. This is not a person who wants to follow God. I've shared before what my old pastor says. He says, you have as much God as you want. That means you are as near to God or as far from God as you want. Because we all have the free will to choose how much time and how much centralization of Christ Jesus we will invest in our relationship with him. She is a high-ranking occult sex symbol, and as such, has been given many privileges that go along with that position. So some of these high-ranking occult sex symbols would be um, one that comes easily to mind is Shakira. Another one that comes easily to mind is Jennifer Lopez. Um, Rihanna is another one. And definitely this one is crowned. Beyonce is crowned as the queen of them. But the Lord says that she pays a consistently high cost for this. And this is because she keeps being humbled in the background by her husband giving her to other men at their insistence when they ask for her, not when she asks for it. Um, the Lord says that this woman is treated like an escort or a call girl and that she has cried out to her husband to stop this aspect of her life. And I shared, the Lord did share in, um, I think the first video on this and said that there's no limit. There is no cutoff point at which they will call for you. And this is the downside. You can have six blockbuster movies in one year, which is kind of impossible. You could win six Os Oscars back to back, which is also kind of impossible. And yet they will be calling for you through all of it. You can never get big enough to stop it. And if this does not sound true to you, think of how many times you have thought that an actress who should have stopped taking off her clothes shocked everyone and took off her clothes. And then the press is called in to normalize this, to say it was a bold move. She's 71 and she did a nude scene. That's a ritual. That's a ritual. And I remember saying to the Lord, Father, it is a pity because truly the scripture is fulfilled when it says there is no rest for the wicked. You put your hand in with Satan, you will keep having to play those games with him until you repent. The devil is merciless. And so God says that they keep calling her for this aspect of forced labor. And her husband is not stopping it because he gets heavily promoted in the brotherhood because of it. He becomes increasingly influential and powerful, and he is given many lesser artists under his control to cement his status. And this man does indeed have his own label. He has a clothing label. He has a label with many people signed under him. And then eventually when they have served and paid their dues, they all get labels, but he gets a cut of every single person under him. It's like an unbelievable pyramid scheme with him at the top. And uh, the man by the name of... P. Diddy is also like this. He is exactly like this um, in bringing people under his rule and then having a cut on that. He is another. These people are called gatekeepers. I knew the word would come to me eventually. They are called gatekeepers. And one of the perks of being a gatekeeper is having free access to men and women to greatly defile them. I spoke of, I think it's called Prima Nocte, which is the right of the first night. 
that the ancient kings used to have where they would, before a young girl is about to get married, especially if she was a pretty one, they would come to the homestead and take her away to the king's house so that he got to sleep with all the virgins first. And I think in Scotland, that's the point of Braveheart. The men just got sick of saying, you keep giving us defiled women, deflowered women. We're not having it anymore. We're breaking away from this entire sickness known as England, and we're going to be a separate nation. And so these people get the right to have access to males and females first. And a lot of the males and females they have access to. Another person is Clive Davis. Thank you. That's another person who does this gatekeeping. Um, is they defile many boys and girls left in their care by irresponsible parents. Macaulay Culkin is a victim of this. Justin Bieber is a victim of this. These young men have said with their own mouths, so this is not conjecture. These young men have said with their own mouths, now that they have are older and when they had a little bit more autonomy to speak, they both have spoken and said that the industry that they are in, Hollywood and the music industry is strongly subject to gatekeeping by pedophiles. Alanis Morissette has recently come out only now speaking of how she was defiled when she was 16. So if you even just do the lightest surface articles reading, you don't even need to deep dive into anything. You will find so many people now that they are older and they have a measure of cemented stardom talking about how in their youth they were abused. But if you're like me, you will notice that in all the abuse stories, not a single person seems to remember a single name of a single abuser, which is pretty strange. Either they all have collective amnesia or nobody's talking because they want to keep their arms and legs attached to their bodies. So this man is promoted in his gatekeeping and has become increasingly influential and powerful. And the Lord says that the heart of his power is his agreement to share his wife. His obedience is richly rewarded with money, status, property, and even more satanic power. So they give tangible outward things like record labels and money and the jewelry and the cars and the timeshares and everything and, and the planes and everything. But behind the camera where we can't see, but where God is constantly watching, they receive higher and higher levels of occultic power. And so he's, the Lord said to me, and he was just saying these things to me personally, I'm the one who had to write them out in this format. God sometimes will just talk to me so I can learn. He said, no, Celestial. For all these reasons, this man will never stop giving his wife out like a toy into the hands of multiple men. I will continue this prophecy in another video. It is extremely long and detailed, and I don't intend to leave anything out, but an hour at a time is enough. So thank you for being with me. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. Um, as you listen to these things, please understand that there is method in them. God is going to punish sin. I'm going to say this. God is going to punish sin at no matter what level it happens. And one thing that has been truly weighing on my heart is something that I discovered many years ago. I was not running the blog at that time, but I found it out and it was just devastating for me. And it's that people rent their children out on Instagram. On Instagram, people are renting their children out in very um, ingenious ways that you cannot find, but they, they market their children out in the open in ways that are not obvious to spot. And they're not renting their children out to, to rich people. Um, like I said, because of certain a certain research that I was doing many years ago, I found things and I saw things that were very hard uh, to see. And it's just that people will just take pictures and say, oh, I've got Emma here and I've got Harris. Emma's, Emma's six and Harris is four. And um, you can have a good time with them for 150 bucks. So these are just ordinary moms. And this is why I always try to bring temperance to these prophecies because I'll just be honest, it's really hard to look at sin at your level. This is what I've noticed about people, about human beings. It is so hard to stare the sin in the mirror that is your own, that it is almost a relief to stare up into the blinding lights and say, I'd rather look at the, the sins of the weekend. I'd rather look at the sins of um, you know, Christina Aguilera 
because it's so hard to deal with the sin at the lower level because the brokenness of self sometimes almost demands that we find a relief in the sins of others. And don't get me wrong. It doesn't matter if sin is taking place on the lowest level. It doesn't matter if sin is taking place in the heights above. God will grab it and bring it all down because the root of all sin is pride. Pride against God. Pride against the creator. Pride against his righteous laws. He will grab it by the throat and bring it all down. But to find that ordinary people are letting people drive through their home to touch Emma and Harris and Raekwon and whoever. Just so that just they do it. There was an article I saw of a happily married homosexual couple who... Um, they adopted, one of the men is Australian, the other man is married. Famous case, famous case. God help me as I speak. Famous case. They adopted a little boy. They adopted a little boy very young and they were raising him and there was apparently the picture of a happy family, but somebody tipped off someone and may God bless that tipper because the Australian police moved and investigated and went into that family and found that they were having parties of up to six to 15 men who were coming and having all mentionable and unmentionable sexual acts with this little boy. In fact, one of the Australian policemen was on record as saying that when the child was rescued and was being debriefed and was being spoken to, he kept thinking that he was supposed to also perform sexual acts on the officer or let the officer perform sexual acts on him. And the police officer cried and asked to be excused from the debrief, a male officer. They said that the child was so well trained in pleasuring men that anonymously the therapist said she did not know if it was possible to rehabilitate this boy. And he was under 10. If I can find that link, I will put it on this video. None of that happened with elites. It happened with two mutually loving, consenting men who sleep with men, who took an orphan child and brought him into the home and then proceeded to do all kinds of things to him that will make it a 0.0000% chance that he will ever be male-oriented again, as who made him? As Jesus made him. And not a single superstar was there when that happened. The filth is on the ground. The filth is in your neighborhood, guaranteed. Guaranteed. It is right there. These boy love and girl love symbols. I have passed that thing on a street I lived in without knowing at all what it was. Without knowing at all what it was. And then I found out in 2017 that this thing, this circular thing, is real and right there. It was on a dentist's office, on the little awning that hung outside the dentist's office. It's everywhere, it's on the ground. I will repeat what the Lord said when I was making the video, this, the sodomy ritual part two, what they do to children. It has a picture of a child covering their mouth. The Lord said that the soil of the United States is crawling with pedophiles. Now seeing as the 1% are not called the 1% because there's so many, that means that as they're crawling, there must be millions of other people crawling right along with them. This is Celestial with the Master's voice. I will be back with the second part of this prophecy. There is quite a bit more to go through. And so until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.